Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so it'll notify you when I post a new video. Okay, so this week we have a really fun and colorful painting inspired by my adventures down here in the Southwest. I have a lovely desert sunset acrylic tutorial for us. I'm gonna take us through it step by step as per usual. I'm gonna be using my three standard brushes that I use for most classes. So I have a square brush, a medium sized pointed brush, and then also a small detail brush. Gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I have for my background step are going to be my primary colors of blue, red, and yellow, and then also some black and white. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that I use, go ahead and check the description box below. It'll take you to my website and show you everything that you need to paint along. Okay, let's go ahead now and jump right in. So what we're going to do is start with our biggest brush. We're gonna start with a beautiful light yellow. We're gonna be starting with here the background and kind of working our way to the foreground. And what I've done is mix a little bit of white into my yellow. And I'm gonna go in the upper right hand side here. And I'm gonna start with a circle. Pretty big circle. This is going to be where my moon is later. So this is kind of like moonshine. All right, like so. And I'm just going to start bringing my brush strokes out a little bit and keeping them circular. Now I'm gonna have just a tiny little pinch of red into my light yellow. And that's gonna create a really pretty sort of peachy color. I'm gonna take that peachy color right around my yellow. And you can blend them together or you can honestly leave them stripy because we're doing the secondary step later of doing a little bit of like additional dashes of color. The blending is not quite as important in this step. It's gonna get sort of blended by that effect. Okay, now I'm blending up a nice vibrant orange with just red and yellow together. I'm gonna take that really pretty vibrant orange right around as well, okay? Don't wanna to lose too much of your yellow there in the center. All right, looking pretty good. Long circular brush strokes, like so. Okay, and I'm gonna rinse my brush slightly and dry it off just a bit. My next color is going to be pink. That's going to be red and white together. If you'd like to learn more about color theory and how to blend colors from your primaries, I do have a course that breaks it all down and it's called Acrylic Color Theory 101 and it is available on Udemy and Skillshare if you'd like to check that out. Also keep in mind, if blending colors is challenging, you can also buy them right out of the bottle. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to rinse my brush again and I'm kind of working my way out to the side here. I'm gonna end up with a fully filled in canvas and we're mixing lots of colors today, giving ourselves a nice challenge. Now I'm going to blend up a purple and purple's gonna be blue and red together plus a little bit of white. And this is the one that can get kind of the most challenging I've found with color blending. All right, that looks pretty good. You really gotta make sure that you're starting with fairly high quality paints as well. I do recommend uh, Blick or Grumbacher are two of my favorites. And again, the description box below will show you that. So now I'm taking this gorgeous purple, and I'm just going to bring that right around my pink, almost here at the edge. Bringing it into the pink as well. Look at those colors next to each other, how 
vibrant. I love that. Okay, and left some room for a little bit of blue. So just blue and let's grab a pinch of white and throw that in there. Why not? Just so our silhouette later is nice and bold. And I'm just going to fill that last little area in with my blue, like so. All right. And just keeping that circular brush stroke throughout. All right, and there we go. Looking really good. And actually over there, I made this nice gradation, but we're gonna cover that with Black Mountains in a minute anyway, so uh, no worries there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and let this layer dry, and then we're gonna come back and add some more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, and we're back with a dry background. I still have the same colors though, uh, since we are gonna kind of do like a three-parter today, and we have a mid layer to do with quite a few different colors. So I just went and kept the colors that I already had on my palette, and I already have a little bit of black here too. So I have my primaries if you need to put a fresh palette for yourself, that's totally fine. With just uh, red, yellow, and blue, and black, and white. Okay, let's go ahead now and jump right back into it. We're going to start now kind of in the center again. And I'm gonna have my medium-sized brush now. And I'm going to start with a yellow orange. So that's just yellow with a tiny, tiny bit of red. And I added just a little bit of white as well. And I'm going to start bringing these brush strokes in a circular direction with lots of different colors now. All around where our moon will be and that was the yellow orange that i started with now i'm going to grab a little bit of red and i brought the orange into the sort of yellow area so now i'm bringing my red sort of into the orange area all around like so you want to have kind of variations of brush widths and you can do that by sort of randomly pressing your brush down harder in some areas very much a kind of starry night effect that's kind of what i was going for all right to already look pretty cute. I'm gonna take a little bit more red. Just right over here in that corner. And into my red section as well, or my pink section rather, and even into the purple. All those beautiful sunray colors reflected in our Impressionism. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm feeling even maybe a little bit more of my light orange. Pinch more white there. Into that section. Okay, so don't worry if things get messy. It's not an exact science here and you'll kind of get into it as you start to go and understand that the idea here is sort of to blend the colors one into the next one, kind of both through the gradation that we did and now through our dashes. Okay, now I'm going in with just blue into this purple section. And remember, we're gonna have mountains here, so I actually don't even really need to go in that area. Just maybe a few strokes of blue there, 
the suggestion of night coming in. So pretty. I realized that I did the moon shape in what was kind of like the colors of a sunset. So I was like, is this a moon or sun or a moonrise or a sunset or a sunrise or a combo of the two? I'm not sure. But I think that's kind of part of the fun of it. It's a little bit mysterious. I'm going to take a light purple. So the purple that I created plus a little bit of white. I'm going to go right in my purple section here and pulling it over to my red. You don't have to follow along with the exact colors at the exact time with me. If you feel like your painting needs a little something, something, you can always add it at any time. And you can mix up the colors too. If you'd like, I think it would be cool even to maybe add some green in the sky since we're not really uh, being bothered by the rules of sunset colors and all that. Go ahead and add whatever colors you like. Okay, that's cute. And now let's take the blue all the way into the corner. It's kind of switching back and forth there on you. That's kind of part of the fun of this painting and even the Starry Night painting too, which I have a simplified version of Starry Night available on this channel as well, which is a fun one to do. Okay, that's looking good. Let me see, what would I like to add? Let's add a little bit of light yellow. Gonna take some white mix it with just yellow it's looking good and just right here in the center and sort of into the yellow I just feel like those kind of needed a little bit more help kind of blending visually yeah that looks nice okay I think that looks really cute now let's go in with some black haven't touched this color yet. I'm excited to, been waiting for it. Let's go ahead and start by adding a little bit of black in the corner here. Is a suggestion of night coming in. So pretty. Love that. Okay. And now we're going to do the mountains. And you can do quite steep mountains. Kind of like these uh, really ancient volcanic mountain peaks and what are called buttes here in the southwest. You could also do the really pretty like rocky outcrop type mountains instead, kind of however you'd like. You're just gonna build your little steep ridge and kind of walk your way all the way over to this left hand corner here. And silhouettes are honestly really forgiving. So have some fun here and create kind of maybe a small mountain range first and then you can kind of adjust it as you go. And I think what I might even wanna do is bring my small brush in there for a moment. But first, I'm just going to go ahead and fill that all in with black. Just using my medium sized brush there. You could, I suppose, use your big brush if you wanted to speed things up for a little bit. And then, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to grab my small brush now. And with that black, I'm just going to come and bring the peaks of my mountains up a little bit just so that I have a little bit more control with my brush. And just kind of doing the suggestion of some rocks and some interest. 
bringing that up just a little bit more. Okay, and kind of random brush strokes here to fill it in, getting a little bit diagonal. All right, that looks good. Now we're gonna let this layer dry. It is important not to let our black dry in all of our gorgeous colors before we add our piece de la resistance, which will be our cacti and of course our beautiful moon. So let's let this dry. And we're actually, I'm gonna toss my colors and get some fresh water and I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back. And we have our final layer now, a dry canvas so far, and then also fresh colors here on my palette. So I have black and white, as well as a blue, yellow, and I do have some of my favorite phthalo green. It is a little bit different of a tone than if you were to just mix the blue and yellow together. Um, so I do recommend getting a little bit of phthalo, not just for this class, but for, um, you know, all my classes, and then also just you know having fun on your own as a painter so i'm going to now uh, let's even grab my medium size brush first you can also use your smaller brush if you'd like a little bit more control for this step but i love this brush uh, so i'm going to grab a little bit of my gorgeous phalo and i'm going to mix it with some yellow and i'm going to get just a really nice basic green color i think i'll sneak a pinch of black into this and I'm going to have a nice dark green. And with this, I'm going to do some bushes. And the bushes are gonna kinda of come up from the bottom here. And this is, once again, yet another sort of layer that we're creating. That's what acrylic painting is all about, is layering. And kinda of the more layers that you can add, a lot of times sort of the better it looks more layers so this one we have quite a few different sort of like foreground mid ground and background layers okay so we're not going to go all the way across with that just a nice little sort of hedge line now i've grabbed a little bit of white i'm just going to kind of scribble my way into those bushes with that lighter color as well. And again, feel free to use a smaller brush if you'd prefer. Okay, super cute. Very nice. All right, and now for our cacti, I'm gonna use my small brush for that. And the cacti color here, I'm going to use phthalo and white as just my base color. So you'll notice that this is just a little bit of a different shade of green than the green that I used for my bushes. And that is the idea here. Okay, so let's start with one here in the background. Sort of a mid, mid layer here. What's great about these types, so these are the Sagoro cacti. Almost said cactuses, caught myself there. And you're gonna have a nice curved top here. And then they have these great little sort of additional trunks that grow from either side. And that is sort of what gives them that iconic look. Okay, super cute, I love it. Okay, and now I'm gonna do a fairly large one over here. Very nice, and you can do as many as you like. I usually like to do a sort of like an odd number of things, but that really depends on your painting and your personal style choices. I think I'm just gonna leave that guy with one cute little arm. The, these cacti are actually enormous. So <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a West Coast girl, originally from the Central Coast of California. And then I transplanted myself up to Oregon Coast uh, for quite a few years and I loved it up there, but I'm adventuring in the Southwest right now. And I'm down in Southern Arizona with the monsoons and the cacti here are super gorgeous, very inspiring. 
And the thing that that startled me was how large they were. I thought they were maybe like the size of a human, you know, or like maybe six or ten feet tall. But they're actually really tall. They're like as tall as trees. Um, so I was quite impressed <laughs> by the size of them. Okay, a couple coming from either side. And they all kind of come out from almost like the same sort of uh, region, I suppose, of the cactus. So this kind of midsection area, all the trunks come out. They end up getting hollow and there's always birds inside, which I think is super cute as well. But I didn't, I didn't add that in today, but I think that that would be a really cute element if you're feeling creative. Okay, looks good. And now let's go ahead and add some secondary colors onto that gorgeous layer that we just added. So I'm gonna grab a very dark green now. So I'm mixing this sort of rich green that I have just with black. And at the top part of my Segoros, I'm going to add just a few little brush strokes coming down just very lightly on either side and then also sort of through as well. So adding some nice shadows, breaking up the green. Okay, that's looking good. And we're just very gently going to bring this color sort of around each one of our Segoro cacti shapes. Oh, and I want to mention if you are painting along today, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group specifically for my students to do so. And it is called The Art Club. And we would love to have you over there. Link in the description box below to join that. It's totally free. Just gotta have Facebook. Okay, and just bringing a little bit of shadows. You don't wanna go too dark, of course, though, because you have your dark background here with your mountains or rocks silhouette there. Okay, that looks really cute. Let's just give that a second to dry. We are gonna add a highlight color onto those as well. But while we wait, I'm going to paint in a cute little organ pipe cactus too. So I'm going to make an even more yellowish type green now. So we wanna have essentially three different tones of green now that we will have used here for three different types of desert foliage and just going to sort of use my baby brush just the tip uh, just very lightly and sort of wiggle my way in here coming out in all different directions these ones are so unique to the southwest and they are pretty much all over they're also pretty good sized Make sure that you have a nice solid green here. All right. And the way that these organ pipe cacti grow is they have sort of like segments. So we're going to add some shadows for that too. But I think actually I want to do like one more little one down here. I think that would be really cute. Like so. Maybe even bring just a little bit more of the sort of brush over here. Got a little bit too watery there. A little bit too much water. There we go. Okay, just to sort of make that all look consistent. And same idea over here. Maybe we'll do a couple of these sort of organ pipe guys. So cute. All right, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So still working in the organ pipe type cactuses. Now I'm going to grab, grab that same 
shadow color. And I'm going to very lightly kind of add some disjointed shadows because again, these are like really cool, like segmented cacti. And the ones in the back, you might not need to even really add much at all because there's not very much detail, of course, as you go into the background, you can't see quite as many details. Okay, now a little bit of white here. We're gonna do some really fun sort of finishing touches. So I'm gonna grab some light yellow and bring that into my cute little organ pipe guy. Okay, so we're just kind of now finishing off each of the cacti. Very nice. And you can again do sort of disjointed brush strokes there. Like it. And then let's sneak a little bit more of that sort of teal color in for the highlight color for our Sagoros. And I'm going to very lightly bring my highlight color down the shape of my big tall Sagoros, like so. Just a few little brush strokes. Look at how cute this painting looks. I really think that the green kind of just accents the pink in such a way in the sunset. And they're just really fun shapes and hopefully fun for all ages and the whole family. Okay, very cute. And just our last little guy over here. And I think what would be cool too would be adding a little bit of blue as sort of a shadow here into my bushes. Too much water again. You get the drip, the dreaded drip that uh, it hides in the upper part of your brush and then it drips down usually when you're doing something very detailed. All right, and I just thought a little bit of blue in there as a sort of shadow color for our sort of desert brush would be pretty and sort of a nice little balancing element of all of our bright colors. All right, and I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of highlight for the desert brush as well. Even though it's desert, there's quite a lot going on, quite a lot of life. All right, and our final little piece de la resistance is going to be our moon. Uh, so we're actually going to need some red for that, and I just realized that I forgot that. So let's go ahead and do a little quick edit. Boop. Boop. Okay, just the tiniest little bit. And we're gonna use that red to mix a very pretty orange. Sort of a mid orange range. I don't wanna get any of my green in there. Making sure I got the right color here. All right, that looks about right. Got my small brush here. And just the final step here is going to be a super pretty crescent moon. And I think I'm actually going to go this direction. And swoop around there. And then just filling it in. like so and that really I think had such a whimsical element to this piece super pretty all right <laughs> 
All right, that looks really pretty to me. So let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. We'd love to have you over in the art club and make sure to check out Color Theory 101 for the beginning acrylic artists available on Udemy and Skillshare. There's also a way now to support the show if you'd like to make a donation. Lots in the description box for you guys down below, so go ahead and check that out. And that is all the instruction that I have for everyone this week, so thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay creative!